you know, I mean, I don't think anybody wants to be a burden to their family, but I also think sometimes people shy away from opportunities. Yeah. Especially now during the holidays. And I wondered if you could shed a little bit of light onto that. Yeah, I, I would love to because that's always a really, that's always a super, super touchy topic when you talk about working your warm market, when you talk about helping your family and friends. And honestly, it depends on your outlook. I've, I mean, because there's a lot of captive companies, a lot of companies out there in general that say, hey, and we don't do this, where, hey, write down 200 people that you know and love and then annoy the freak out of them until they buy insurance from you. That's not like, that's not my mentality or, or but I will say there's two benefits, and we're getting a little background noise if you can help me along the way, Steve. I'm there's trying to get it. two benefits to working your warm market. Number one, you love them and you care about them. And if something happens to them, guess who's going to feel bad that we didn't help them? Number one, it's going to be the agent. So if you want to be that guy, because I've had agents that, that call me and say, hey, dude, you know what? My brother hates me now because I asked him about his life insurance. Well, dude, your brother needs to grow up and you need to go, you need to, you need to talk to him again. But number one, if you love them or care about them, if, if, if you're that guy and you, or gal and you don't talk to your family about what you do, which is really important, which is life insurance, and then, and then a year goes by and they pass away and say it's your brother's wife or something, who, guess what? Who's going to feel bad? Not only are you going to feel horrible because you didn't do your job, but also you're going to feel horrible because guess who's going to... Guess who's going to, you know, they're, they're going to be passing the hat at the funeral when you could have taken care of it. Or let's just say it was your brother and then your wife is, is losing about 80 grand a year of income. Guess what she's going to do? You're going to feel personally responsible. So let's put, the, let's put cells aside. The first benefit is that, hey, they're family. The second benefit is that it's low-hanging fruit. It's a chance for you to... I think it's the easiest way for an agent to help and be a service to their family and friends and make 10 grand in their first 30 days. Like most people are broke, we're, we're, you know, and, 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 and it's, it's difficult to succeed in this business. It's easy to fail. It comes down to do you love and care about your family and friends? I'm telling you what, I've never ruined a relationship because I talked to family or friend about insurance. If you believe it, if you're passionate about it, and if you're serious about it, and you actually love and have a passion for what you do, then it won't come across that you're just trying to sell your family and friends some, you know, some Avon or something. At the end of the day, you're, you know, you're, you actually have a passion for what you do. You care, and it's more, it, more important than you just, you know, selling the low-hanging fruit and grabbing some commission. It's also a great way to learn the business because they're going to listen to you. So. One way to approach family and friends is you've got to have a list. You've got to know who you want to approach, but then approach them a little differently. Don't just say, hey, I'm the insurance guy. I'm an, I'm, an, I'm an insurance person now, and I'm going to come sell you insurance. No. Just say, hey, you know what? I help. I, I love what I do. I don't think I've shared it with you. I help, family and, you know, I, I help my family and friends protect their, their greatest asset. Um, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to share it with you. Because it's important, so you know, I'll, I'll I'll bring over some pizza. We'll grab some dinner. But I, I I'm I'm gonna review your insurance while I'm there. You love me. I love you. Like there's no reason to make this awkward. I'm gonna I'm gonna review it. If I can help you, if I can put you in a better situation, fantastic. If I can't, we got to hang out and eat dinner. So you want to do that Tuesday or Wednesday? It doesn't wow, have to be awkward. Great. I like that, Cody. That's a great low-pressure way to simply, hey, yeah, you know, I'm just going to tell you up front, this is what I do. I want to I wanna bring a pizza over. I want to visit with you. Let's just talk. If I can help you, great. If I can't, that's okay, too. Takes the pressure off them, makes it so it's not awkward, and yet it opens the door for that warm market business that you were talking about. Totally. Absolutely fantastic way of getting into that. Let's jump into those three prospecting strategies. The first one being rolling 100. So I semi explained a little bit of it, but rolling 100 is a list of 100 warm market prospects. Makes sense, right? So you've got a, you've got a rolling 
100. And the reason it's rolling, as you can see from the bottom, is say you've got, you know, 98, 99, 100, right? So you got John, you, you got to have Betty, right? I've always got Betty and everything. John, Betty, and Sue. So if Betty, she's a buyer every time. Oh gosh, Betty's are buyers. So she buys from you, she buys what car insurance, whatever, right? So you take her off the list, but you replace her with somebody else. Right? So that's why it's a rolling 100. There's always 100 names that are active, active for you to talk to. This is something that I used early on and it freaking crushed it for me because it's a better concept than, hey, go write down 500 people that you know, right? It's 100. It starts small. 100 is easy. Like there's a book out there called Prospecting Made Easy that says if you can't write down 500 people, prospects, then you're not serious about prospecting. So 100 is easy and you have this rolling 100. So it's a list of warm market prospects. I always say that every agent has $100,000 waiting for them in their rolling 100, right? You guys saw me make at least half that, right, in eight months off of these and probably only about the first four or five months because I kind of slowed down on it. The problem is too many agents think that they're that they're out of warm market prospects after they've run out of their close friends and family to sell. But that's not actually true. So let's go through some ideas of who could be part of your rolling 100. Obviously relatives, friends. And as we roll through this, start making a list and thinking of names, right? You're, you're part of this. Let's make some freaking notes and start to put some of this into action. Relatives, friends. Friends of friends that you've met. I, I just thought of three friends of friends that I've met in the last month that I don't that I that I know a little. Didn't you? Parents friends, grandparents friends, teammates from high school and college. I just thought of several as well, right? I thought of a bunch actually. Coaches from those teams, coaches from other teams. Who cares, right? Former high school and college classmates. I just thought of a few. Former teachers. Some of the teachers liked you. Some of them hated you. Well, now is your chance to get, you know, to show them that you, you, you're not a jerk anymore. <laughs> People from church. A favorite waiter from restaurants that you frequent. I've got this restaurant in Springfield that I really like going to. It's called Char, okay? There's a waiter there, Haristo. I, I like that dude, man. He waited on us when we at a Mexican restaurant before. Now he's at the steak restaurant. He remembered us, and the dude's customer service is off the freaking chain. He would be on my rolling 100. He would. People you see at any organization or club that you're a part of. The mechanic you always use. And think about people that you give money to should always be on this list. If you give them money, I believe in, I would tell them, I believe in doing business with people that do business with me. Okay. Perfect. So when you give people money, the guy that mows your lawn, the landscaper, the pool boy, when you don't even have a pool, whatever, right? The mechanic, former coworkers, former bosses, regulars from your last job, people you play rec basketball league ball with, softball, right? People you see at the gym. I've got this one guy. Like, I'm giving you so many ideas right now. You've got to be jotting these down. I go to the gym. There's this, name, there's this guy named John there, right, that talks to me every morning when I go to the gym. He's probably 50s, low 50s, low to mid 50s. Um, he's like a big CEO or manager at some place. The dude loves me. He needs to be on my rolling 100, as he does yours, right? I'm not saying he does because he's on mine. He can't be on yours. Your accountant. My CPA owns insurance with us. He just does. I'm going to blow you away with some stories tonight too. Managers of your favorite stores. Your landlord. I got multiple that I need to be on my list, right? Contractor. Anyone in your fantasy sports leagues. I've had several realtors that I haven't sold to and, and several I have, right? I've sold neighbors. It's on here. I've sold a lot of 
fantasy sports leagues. I like that. A lot of people in my fantasy sports leagues are, you know, friends, clients, or they're already agents because I've already recruited them, right? Parents of your children's friends. You got some there. Neighbors, right? I've got several neighbors that own policies with me. Previous neighbors, old neighbors, original neighbors, new neighbors, whatever. Barista. You guys think I'm nuts, but there's, and, and I, I shouldn't have this many stories, right? Because you guys are the, I'm supposed to be helping you, I'm helping me. There's this chick that knows, there's multiple chicks that this that know this, know, know my name at the local Starbucks, right? And they talk to me every time I go in there. And when I don't go in there for a week because I start making it at home, they're like, oh, Cody, where you been? You know, we missed you. There's always, always more people to talk to. Any of your insurance agents, any insurance agents you know, right? There could be, and, and, and by that, there could be agents that sell PNC that don't sell life, or that sell life but don't sell PNC, that don't sell group benefits, that don't sell Medicare, right? Whatever. The salesman who sold you your car. Multiple. Actually, funny story there, I bought my BMW X5 about four months ago. And when I bought that car, the guy wanted a couple million dollar life insurance quote. So there you go. Just from buying a car, right? This actually works. Like there is hundreds of thousands of dollars sitting and waiting on you to grow up and do your job. Realtor. Several realtors. My sister's my realtor now, so that one's out, but several realtors before. So that's how it should look. You write a hundred names. If they say no, they shouldn't say no. Like I don't get a no when I call my warm market. I don't get a no. If they say no, or you can't help them slash can't help. There you go. That's good. If they say like like I'm gonna I'm gonna get a hold of all of them. No, can't help, or they buy. Right? Then I mark them off the list like Betty, because every Betty's a buyer. So that's how it should look. Does that make sense so far? Okay. It's what I like to call the rolling 100. It's the best warm market concept in the industry. Hey, when we talk about working in the warm market, one of the number one objections that we get from agents or questions we get about warm market is, dude, I've exhausted it. I don't know what to do. It's toast, bro, and I don't know how to make any money, right? I'm telling you, your warm market is not exhausted. Even you speaking that into existence is freaking ridiculous. It ain't true, right? So instead, I want you to create your list. But, what, but instead of like just creating a big list, I want you to start doing a rolling 100 like we've talked about in the past. 100 names, Betty buys, take her off, put another name at the bottom. When you take off a name, if they buy, die, or don't buy, take them off and add another name. Every time you take a name off, you add a name, okay? But also you gotta think about it, your warm market is this. The people that are in your warm market also have Guess what? As Tiki Keithy said, a warm market as well. So start to realize that your warm market is not exhausted. When you meet someone, you go to the same Mexican restaurant every freaking Tuesday for Taco Tuesday, and you go every single week, six weeks in a row, you got the same waitress. Guess what? She has a family. She needs help. She could be on your rolling 100. It never ends. For you to think your warm market is exhausted, it means you gave up. You quit. Let's not quit, right? It goes on forever. Your my warm market grows and goes as long as I want it to go. If I want it to end, it's over. If I don't want it to end, I want to keep freaking going, right? And then it'll keep going. I'll ask for referrals. I'll add people that I meet. I'll think outside the box. I'll realize that my warm market, they also have a, guess what, a warm market, okay? It doesn't have to end. It only ends up here. Helping friends and family, super low hanging fruit, but no one ever wants to do it. Because they're like, I don't want to be that annoying nephew, father, son, wife, you know, whatever, to, to, to my friends and family. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk to you how to be unannoying and sell your friends and family and help them. Because what you don't want is to end up, something happens to them, and you didn't bring it up, you didn't help them because you thought you maybe were going to be annoying. And then before you know it, you're like, gosh dang it, I should have. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I used to approach my specific friends and family consistently. And that's just one of the things I don't, I don't talk about in, 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 in my story. I made 117 grand, eight months, 20 years old, all that. I, I, I worked my warm market. I used this strategy to work my warm market early in my career. 
during the first several months, right? A, little, like cold, a lot of cold calling, a lot of cold door knocking, but I had a decent amount. I would say at least 20, 30 grand was friends and family. Okay, so here's how to sell friends and family without being annoying. I'm sure you don't want to be, okay, I don't either, right? There's, the first thing you got to think about is that you're number one, if you do it correctly, you're not going to be annoying. Okay, so here's, the, here's some of the things that I did and that I think you can do. Okay, you need, there's several pillars of things that you need to do. Announcing on social that this is what you are doing now in a fun, non-creepy way that I'm selling insurance now, announcing on social so that when you do approach them, they're not surprised, okay? That's a good first one. Most people never do this or they just update their job to I'm now an insurance agent. That's not what I'm talking about, right? I'm talking about getting creative, you know, and and and, and actually um, putting up a picture, giving away something, you know, and standing by the giveaway. Just like think creatively about it, okay? That's the first one, okay? Announcing it on social. The second one is you need to and, and, and the second and third one will go together. Add them to a newsletter. One thing I used to do a lot was a monthly newsletter that was actual, I'm not saying it has to be physical paper, but it, mine was physical paper and I mailed it out every single month. Okay, it could be an email newsletter. Or I'm gonna give you another idea, okay? But, but I always added them to a newsletter as well. So that no matter what, like I had had someone that, that, what, that, that I had added to my newsletter that wasn't even friends or family. He, he got newsletters for three years and finally said, dude, I, I, I don't know why I get these every month from you, but you're the first person I thought about when I need to shop my insurance. And so I called you, because you were persistent. Okay, so that's good, right? So go ahead and do that and add them to that. The third thing is you need to be sending um, some type of, uh, some type of, some type, I would send some type of card, uh, like a written on it or swag or a gift, right? Or something that most people don't do that is very unique, okay? To all, everyone that's on my list, because the next thing I'm gonna talk about is actually creating a hit list, a top 200. And what I did when I created this list is I have something called a rolling, I have something called a rolling 100, but it could easily be a rolling 200, okay? And I, with this rolling 100, I'll stick with the name, with this rolling 100, what I do is I have a, I have a list of 100 people that know me or that I know them, and I have them on this list. Okay, and I approach them, I approach them, and anytime they buy or don't buy, I remove them from the list. But anytime that you remove someone, when you remove one, you have to automatically add one so that it's constantly rolling. It's always 100 people on this list. I'm telling you, agents could make $100,000 a year just doing this strategy right here but nobody ever does it because they're scared to be annoying. So stop being scared. Okay, so, but also, when you're doing this, is I've got this list, you're, now you're probably wondering, well dude, what's the script? How do I approach them, right? I'm calling, and here's, here's what I did. I'm calling, hey, hey Uncle Daryl, this is Cody, how you doing man, right? right? I mean, I'm, I'm natural with it. Okay, how's everybody been, how's, how's, How's the kids, right? Whatever, right? Just be natural, normal conversation. How's everything going? Hey, by the way, I don't know if you heard, I'm in the insurance business now. I wanna come over and see if I can help you out, see if I can save you any money on what you currently have, man. Um, I can bring over pizza, we can hang out at the pool, whatever. Um, but I wanna come over and, and, and check out your insurance policies. I'm assuming you probably have insurance with somebody, right? Yeah, okay, cool. I just wanna come check it out. It'll be a chance for me to learn. Number one, learning opportunity is, is, is a good way to get in the home, right? I wanna learn and I wanna just, uh, Take a look and, and see if there's any way that I could maybe help, right? And if I can't, here's my promise to you, Uncle Daryl, if I can't put you in a better situation when I'm learning and looking, then we won't, do, we, won't, we won't do any business, which is totally cool. But at the end of the day, I need to look and talk to as many people as I can so that I can learn. And if I can help you while I'm there, fantastic. If I can't, fantastic. Either way, we got to hang out and eat together. Sound fair enough? 
That's the natural, normal, non-weird, non-threatening approach that most people need to take that approach. But they don't, and they never, most people are afraid to, 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 to do it because they're like, dude, my, my brother's not gonna love me anymore. I'm like, dude, if you call and ask your brother if you can take a look at his insurance, and he doesn't love you anymore, that is the wackiest thing I've ever heard. Maybe he didn't love you to begin with. Like, that's stupid, okay? That's just weird. Right? But you can approach them this way. Most people don't want to. There's companies and IMOs, everything else that like promote that we you don't have to do this. Dude, I don't want my family member, a family member or friend to pass away and I didn't talk to them about insurance and then I feel bad. I would. As should you. Here's another piece to this. You say, well, Cody, I only have a list of a hundred. And I, I remove someone. Who who do I add? I already, I created the whole list. I don't have anybody to add. You're wrong in that respect. And here's why. Because you could be adding the waitress, you know, somebody from church, somebody from the grocery store, right? Somebody from golf, from, from the pro shop, golfing, right? Whatever. Somebody to play pickleball with. It doesn't matter, right? You are running into people every single day that could be going on your list. Every single week, I would want to remove I would be one of removing 10 to 20 and adding 10 to 20 every single week, okay? And you can do that because I, I mean, you gotta think about it. I just recruited um, and, and had got Andy interviews with someone from, from local restaurant Char, local country club Twin Oaks, local office depot, no joke. Like this, this is legit stuff. Uh, we tried to recruit somebody from Best Buy. Um, we were able to recruit someone that I used to play football with in high school Right, you, you, you see the trend, if I want to research and find someone and get in front of people and add someone to my list, I can if I just think about it and, and make it a priority. Most people never make it a priority because why? Because they're scared of what to say. The, 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 having having a, a list, having the, the right script and approach and then doing it can save you it can, 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 can save you that embar future embarrassment later because you didn't help your family or friend. And it can also probably make you $100,000 a year. Like if I would have used this strategy, the rolling 100, and consistently been updating this and always taking somebody off and adding someone on multiple every day, I'm telling you, I could have not cold called or cold door knocked and just did this if I would have just done it. Here, here's the main issue that people have though. Above everything, right, is people are scared, there's fear, because they gotta get out of their comfort zone. Okay, successful people are the best in the world at conquering fear, at getting out of their comfort zone, at forcing them to do, do things, forcing themselves to do things they don't wanna do. Right, one of the biggest reasons why I used to, I still do today, but, but actually make, uh, take a cold shower every morning, it forces me to do something I don't wanna do. I used to go, Cold door knocking at 9 a.m. to kick off my day, or cold calling at 9 a.m. to kick off my day, or or you know, do, or, or, or do something like that, because I want to do the things I don't want to do. I want to do them first. I want to get them out of the way. So the rest of my day, it's easy to do things I don't want to do because I did that, right? I just forced myself to run a half marathon. That was the reason why is because I don't want to say I never did it, and because I was scared to do it, I didn't think I could do it. So I conquered my fear of doing it and did it, right? We can absolutely help if you come from a place of actually helping people and helping your friends and family and doing those things instead of oh my gosh i see dollar signs right so i am going to be annoying that that, that, that then you're going to give everybody a bad rap right but at the end of the day if the focus is to help people first because they're your friends and family and you care about them and and even though maybe the maybe the, the dude at office depot i don't remember his name was not a friend it doesn't mean that i maybe couldn't help him okay so get creative Think outside the box, realize everyone on the planet is a freaking prospect. Here's how to stop being annoyed. Hey, if you like this video, you're gonna love the next one. All right, it's right there, click on it. I'll see you in there. I got more gratification and satisfaction helping them make money and, and, and the light bulb click for them than I did when I made a sale. And I said, if I ever get a chance to spend the rest of my life helping others,